Let it all be destroyed. Hello and welcome to another Hot Rodster Review. Today I will be reviewing the fifth season of the popular anime series, My Hero Academia. Now this season was a bit all over the place. It started off being extremely boring, but towards the end I got really hyped for the next arc. This season adapted a few arcs from the manga. It finished up the pro hero arc from the last season and it adapted the joint training arc, the endeavor agency arc, and the Meta Liberation Army arc. It also teased a new arc for the next season, and this season was just very interesting to say the least. This season started off with a little bit of filler and with the conclusion of the Pro Hero arc. If you've seen my previous reviews, you've already know that I always get a little disappointed by the introduction of a season being a filler episode. This episode was unsatisfactory and it just felt like a waste of an episode. The season's slow start was definitely a turn off for me. I can only assume that this is going to be the standard moving forward and that just sucks since it kills the hype for the new season. So instead of complaining about that again, I'm just gonna talk about the conclusion of the pro hero arc. And this conclusion was somewhat difficult to follow. There wasn't any good recap of the previous events and it went back and forth from Endeavor being in the hospital to his encounter with Dobby right after defeating the Nomu last season. But one thing I did enjoy learning about was that Hawks is a double agent or a triple agent. It just added some more drama to the show and it kept the story very interesting. Overall, I enjoyed this arc, but I wish it wasn't split between two seasons. This conclusion could have easily been wrapped up in one additional episode in season four. The joint training arc somewhat felt like another filler arc. It was the longest arc this season and it just felt like there was almost no story progression. I recognize that the point of this arc was to demonstrate Deku's new quirk and to convey the one for all's quirk singularity, but it took way too long to even reach that point. I was just bored for most of the arc and the fact that Deku's match was the last one did not help at all. My main point here is that I recognize this arc's importance to Deku's character but it did not have to be as long as it was. Another reason that I personally have a problem with this arc is partly because of the trailer for season five. In that trailer, we see Deku using one for all in the setting of the joint training arc and something bad happens. And in promotional posters, it is implied that Deku is going to get a new quirk. So going into this season, I was very excited to see what was going to happen but the overall slow pacing just killed my excitement and enjoyment. This arc is actually partly responsible for me re-watching My Hero Academia from the first season because I wanted to see if this show was always this bad or if it was just this arc. And while this arc was slow, it did have some very enjoyable moments. We got a ton of character development from the side characters and each of them got their moment to shine. And now I'm also a tad more familiar with the Class 1B characters. The action, animation, and strategy shown during these episodes was pretty entertaining to watch. I personally liked learning about Umikage's training with Hawks, Tenya's new Reciproc Turbo, and Bakugo's new teamwork skills. But while I did enjoy all of that, the arc just felt like it dragged in places and it overall did not feel like the best way to start off season 5. The Endeavor Agency arc was a really decent short arc. This is actually the first time the anime has adapted an arc in a different order, and it was definitely noticeable. I'll come back to this point later at the end of the review, but right now I'm just gonna talk solely about the quality of this arc. And honestly, I thought it was neat that we got some more insight into Shoto and Endeavor's family life, as we really haven't seen much of that since season two. There's been some more focus on Endeavor recently, and I think that his redemption arc is very cool. It is obvious that he is trying to make amends for the wrongs he had done in the past, and I personally love loved it since I like redemption stories. I believe that people have the capacity to change and improve, so seeing Endeavor do that was very heartwarming. At the end of the arc, we see that he has determined that the best thing he can do for his family would be for him to separate himself from them. 
I think it takes a really big person to admit that they have done irreparable damage and this action conveyed that he only wants to do what is right. He isn't trying to be selfish, he is trying to rectify the damage he had done in the past. Also another thing I enjoyed about this arc is that we got to see some cool training with Deku, Shoto, and Bakugo. It was just interesting to see the small and specific details to how Endeavor uses his quirk as it gave insight into how these students can improve. These details let me know that this power system is very thought out. <laughs> The Meta Liberation Army arc was an arc that this series desperately needed. For most of the season, it felt like there was almost no plot progression. The League of Villains had been a known threat since season one, yet we really hadn't seen them do anything big or important since season three. Not only did this arc give us some plot progression, but we also got some more insight as to what the League of Villains were actually up to. One thing I liked about this arc is that it actually developed these villains. During season three, I remember feeling like Shigaraki wasn't a developed nor well written character. He just seemed like a generic evil villain and I honestly didn't think we would get any progression of his character because of how slow the story had been moving up until this arc. This arc made me feel bad for these villains, so I was rooting for them to win against the Meta Liberation Army. And I've never mentioned him in my reviews before, but I have always found Twice to be an interesting character. He low-key reminded me of Deadpool with his mask and his eccentric personality. I believe we were first introduced to him in season three and learning about his condition was definitely terrifying. It was like that one filler episode in Naruto where his own clones turn against him, but it was much more serious and deadly. His mental condition also gave insight as to how the hero society has left some people behind. Because of his condition, he just cannot be himself in this society. It was awesome to see him overcome his past trauma in this arc. Seeing him get beaten and being forced to watch his friend die just made me want to root for him. So when he came out with his sad man's parade, it was just very epic to see. It was easily one of the best moments in this arc and it let me feel like he is a fully developed character. There was a very strong theme of liberation in this arc. I just talked about how Twice was liberated from his past trauma, but we also got to see Toga and Shigaraki get liberated as well. During this arc, it was mentioned that quirks are a part of every person, so it affects your personality and how you would interact with people. This idea is also somewhat hinted at during the first season when people at the entrance exam wondered how Deku had such a weak personality even though he had such a powerful quirk. In this arc, we see that Toga's quirk also affects how she demonstrates her love. She is literally obsessed with blood due to the nature of her quirk, so people saw her as a monster and she had no place in society. And the same thing is true for Tomura Shigaraki. He is literally obsessed with destruction because it is in the nature of his quirk. He literally had an itch that wouldn't go away until he destroyed things. Both of these characters, especially Shigaraki, experienced some kind of liberation during this arc. Redestro noticed this and he knew that if Shigaraki took over that he could truly liberate the world. That took some pressure off of him to be the symbol of liberation and that is why his stress depleted. This arc just had a lot of great writing all around and it made me excited to see what is going to come in the next arc. While I love this arc, I do have a few criticisms and it mostly has to do with the censorship that took place. In the manga, there was a scene with a hate group called the Creature Rejection Clan or the CRC for short. Their whole thing was that they hate people with mutant quirks like Spinner. When I first read this, I saw the parallel to the KKK. I thought it was kind of cool because it added to the world building. Even in a society filled with heroes and powers, there are bound to be hate groups. Also, it added some context to the League of Villains by showing that they were so poor that they had to rob hate groups for money. Also, in general, there was a lot of censorship when it came to blood and gore. Like in the manga, Shigaraki lost his fingers while in the anime, they just got broken. 
Another thing that they cut was the introduction of Redestro. In the manga, there was more of a dive into his ideology, and we get to see him kill his assistant for being against the idea of meta liberation. This seemed to set him up to be a threat, and I think it's a shame that they got cut out of the anime. I understand why they do stuff like this. They have to make their content friendly for TV, but I can't help but feel a little disappointed. But overall, I believe that this was the best arc of this season. Before I wrap up this video, I want to talk about the music for this season. I personally didn't enjoy these openings as much as I enjoyed the previous ones, but they were alright. I did like the beat drop in the first one. It was kind of slow, but then it picked up, and I'm probably biased against the visuals since I personally didn't really care for the joint training arc. But I actually did enjoy the second opening a bit more. My only gripe with it is that I wish they had changed the visuals for the song during the Meta Liberation Army arc. I feel like it would have been better had it been all villain visuals and no heroes, but hey, at least the song is fun to listen to. Overall, this season had a lot of flaws, but I am also now more invested in the story than I ever was before due to the Meta Liberation Army arc. This season swapped the order of the Endeavor Agency arc and the Meta Liberation Army arc, and I can understand why Studio Bones decided to make this change, but I do believe that there were some flaws to doing that. Like I said earlier, My Hero Academia was beginning to stagnate a bit story-wise. The Meta Liberation Army arc was a much needed arc for this series to get me invested to make me feel like my time hadn't been wasted watching this show. In the manga, since the Endeavor Agency arc came after the Meta Liberation arc, it felt like a brief break from a very intense arc. But in the anime, the Endeavor Agency arc somewhat felt like more of nothing. Don't get me wrong, it was nice to see the training and Shoto's family life, but it also felt like the plot was not really moving. And it also kind of spoiled the fact that the League of Villains team up with the Meta Liberation Army since we already see people like Rita Stro hanging out with the rest of the League. But despite these placement issues, I did have a great time watching these arcs, and I am more hyped than I ever was before to see the next arc get animated. We already got a sneak peek with Eraserhead reaching out to his childhood friend, and we see that everyone is getting ready to attack the villains. I am very excited to see how all of this is going to be handled in Season 6. Thank you for watching my video. Be sure to leave a like and to destroy that subscribe button to see more My Hero Academia content on this channel. And let me know what you thought about this season in the comment section down below. I'll see you in the next life. Peace out.